For Ali Armbruster, the road to law school was as rocky as they come. The application process alone took guts. These are law schools, and the goal is to learn and uphold the law. And I have spent the past 10 years of my life breaking the law. And so I understand why the reaction would be a, a hard no. And yet in her early days, Ali had it made. Her dad's an accomplished lawyer, and she was captain of the debate team at Pace Academy, a prestigious private school in Buckhead. You know, the flip side of growing up in such a charmed childhood is that there's a lot of pressure to be successful. And I think that, you know, I had somehow internalized that, that achievement was the only measure of my self-worth. She found relief from that pressure by drinking and smoking pot, starting at the end of her junior year. And it got worse when she left home to go to Princeton University. If you look at my transcript from Princeton, it's like, I mean, you can just see, like, in my grades, the decline, um, you know, which coincided with how much I was using. Right before her senior year, Allie took medical leave from Princeton, came home, and met a guy who introduced her to heroin. Tell me about the heroin. Yeah, um, you know, heroin is, uh, it's so powerful and it's so physically addicting, which is sort of what makes it different from any other drug. You know, with heroin, it's like when you don't have it, I mean, you feel physically like you're dying. And I mean, it's like you have the flu times a thousand. You overdosed how many times? I've overdosed and been in the hospital four times. Arrested. Um, I've, been, <laughs> I've been arrested for possession of heroin and cocaine six times and been in treatment for countless times. Countless times. <laughs> yeah, um, I've been to inpatient, I've been to outpatient, I've been to just about every halfway house in Atlanta. Ali's fast downward spiral took a heavy toll on her family. It was hard for all of us to come. Her mom tried to get her help way back there. when she first started because drinking. There were so many years that um, I went to bed and didn't know if she would be alive the next day. There were times when you kind of had to turn your back. Oh, I did. It was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done to say, I'm done. For now, I'm done. I've done all I can do. The last time Allie was arrested was in 2013. It was the only time her parents did not get her a lawyer. She spent four months in the Cherokee County Jail. It, in a way, it saved my life because I was separated from heroin for long enough that I, that I could start to think clearly again. I mean, I had to be locked up to get away from that drug. When she got out, she stayed sober for a while before ending up back in rehab. Only this time was different. Something really clicked. But I went to rehab the last time and they were like, maybe you should go back to school. And so that's what I did. And it was like, as soon as I did that and I started to feel good about myself, everything started to change. Allie went to Oglethorpe University to finish her bachelor's degree, but had one more big setback. Her final overdose was her rock bottom. When I woke up in the hospital, I had like a sense of, of willingness to do the work, to do what I needed to do to get sober that I had never had before. Her family was also ready to do what they needed to. Every time Allie wanted to try, I stood with her. And that was a lot of times. It sounds like you've come up with a plan. And my family did too, my sister did. And eventually it worked. Allie began a 12-step program, started doing yoga, and set her sights on law school. Not only did she get into GSU, but she earned a scholarship. I am forever grateful that this school took a chance on someone like me. Allie gave a speech to Georgia State Law Scholarship donors last semester. Serving time in jail and living as an active addict for so many years opened up my eyes and my heart to the systemic inequalities in our justice system. If we can figure out a way to treat people, then they won't be, they won't keep going back. You know, I, I went back to jail over and over and over again because I, I wasn't fixing the fundamental problem. <laughs> After about a decade of drug abuse, Allie's been clean and sober for almost three years. She's fun and she's funny and, you know, she tells me the truth and she's working hard 
and um, it's just a joy. I look back on all of it and I feel like it, it, like I was a different person, like it happened to somebody else. It's sort of surreal, you know, um, even seeing like the picture, like my mug shots. To me, it's like I'm looking at, at a completely different person. It's important for people to know that, that there is hope.